Okay, we're looking at the remote control option, the app for the iPhone, and they have an Android app as well. And you just turn on the camera. This was very easy to pair the two devices, by the way. And once they're paired, then you don't have to go through that process again. But what you do have to do is you start the camera and you press the little Wi-Fi button on the top, start the Wi-Fi. Then you do have to go into the settings on the phone and switch over to that Wi-Fi connection and so it'll show up as FC 1000 and some funny numbers there and so you click makes the connection the camera sees that you made the connection then it even tells you to launch the imaging app so now I go back to the app and I launch the app and then once I launch the app they're simply going to be connected and it's going to warn you that these the, the uh, lens will come out when you make the connection so if you have something in front of the lens that you don't cause harm to the camera so there we just made the connection and I've got them side by side just for demonstration purposes. The range is quite good. You can go you know all over. I could have go go all over the place with this, you know, I'd say at least a 100 foot range. I've tested it probably 50 or 75 feet. So don't quote me on 100 feet. But pretty good range between the two devices and gives you a lot of control. You can see there I'm zooming in and then I can tap the focus which by the way, the camera itself doesn't even have that, a touch screen. So I can tap and I can focus, I'm focusing on the chair and then I'll focus on the pillow in the background. And so that works very nicely. The, um, you can also do exposure compensation. There's a bunch of different controls that you can get to here. You can start and stop video clips and do stills. So pretty, pretty impressive. I think Sony should pay a little bit of attention to what Panasonic has done here because first of all this was much easier to connect and to do the pairing. Second of all this gives me a lot more control over things that I'm going to do with the camera and it's just it's it's a joy to use whereas the Sony solutions I don't even use. They're at least at the time I tried them they were so kludgy I gave up on them. And of course this camera, since it has the electronic zoom, you can zoom in and everything, whereas on the Sony you, you can't do that, well at least on the Sony cameras I have, the A7R and the NEX7, none of them have a power zoom. So it, I think it's ready for prime time. I think this remote for the FZ1000 is definitely a, a, a way to go if you need to control your camera remotely. Let's say you're doing a selfie, you're doing a a sit down or whatever or stand up or whatever and it's just you there and this way you can zoom it to exactly where you want and you can control you know starting and stopping and and all that right from where you are so pretty good so let me know what you think let me know if you've used the remote on the FZ1000 or on similar Panasonic cameras and let me know what you do with the remote and what features if any you'd like them to add to the remote and also when you're using it do you um, do you use a do you plug in the camera to power it uh, do you have any problems with battery issues and so forth when you're doing long shoots and how do you overcome those there you can see I'm uh, I'm adjusting the exposure compensation so search my channel keyword FZ 1000 and you'll see all my reviews on this camera I'm reviewing it extensively all this week so if you need to know something about this camera, I'm probably talking about it. And be sure to subscribe to my channel and follow me on Twitter. Let me know if you've picked up one of these beauties. Thanks for watching.